What a wonderful way to begin the 10th National African American Librarians Conference with by spotlighting the CSK Book Awards with these prolific authors and illustrators. It is such an honor to be here. I love librarians. I grew up in a library that was, we didn't, I mean, we only had three channels on television and we were only allowed to watch it, you know, from six to seven after dinner, unless it was a church night. So I had, I hung out at the library. I read books. All my life of not reading, by the way, because I wasn't a reader, but all my life of seeing the books with the seals on them. And to think that here I am, this 20, at the time, 27, 28 year old kid who had gone through all kinds of craziness to get to this point was one of the people who had a seal in their books. Um, a long legacy. I mean, like, it's crazy to be up here, a long legacy. When I got the award, I could not imagine that I would have gotten a letter like that. Um, and I consider that letter as much to the Coretta Scott King Committee as I do to myself. Because I'm not sure that I would at least be here without that award. That award is a hand up, right? Some schools will only buy award-winning books and it's a hand up that says, you know what, y'all, something important is going on here. And so I thank you for being that hand up. It's so wonderful to have presented this for you today. Um, like I said earlier, Dot and I, Coretta Scott King Book Award is part of our life. We live it. <laughs> Even in retirement, you know, we live it. The young people in the audience I want to encourage you to get involved, to get involved. The greatest experience of my life has been involved in the American Library Association, the Black Caucus, and I have friends all over the country. Get involved. You are not going to grow if you sit in your library and open the door for somebody to come in. Amen. You are not going to grow. Don't wait for the job to pay your way. the needs of the community really are still thriving. Everybody doesn't have access to computers and printers or even quiet places to go to get their minds right. Everybody can't afford to bring a family of four somewhere entertaining in the middle of the week. Everybody can't fill out the financial aid papers for their kids' college. Everybody can't, aff can't afford a personal tutor, but they can get six other parents to split the costs and and, and, and that's what you're doing now. I'm sure libraries in our communities are being hurt worse than others by budget cuts. And I applaud you librarians who are doing the best with what you have to work with. Like public school teachers, I'm sure you have to make many sacrifices, librarians. Don't ever forget who you serve and the impact that you have on their future. I was blown away. Librarians can party, make a lot of noise. I love that. Ah! So what I'd like to do is invite you into my studio and share with you the how and the why of the work that I've done over the years. And it has been over the years. I think it's uh, 60 years since my professional uh, first image. And this is from the uh, old African, again, partnering with um, uh, Julius Lester, and that's the cover. It's a powerful story about Ebo Landing. My new book, um, which won the Coretta Scott King Honor, which is in, uh, in Plain Sight, which is a powerful story about a grandfather's relationship with his granddaughter and, and certainly infused in these two characters um, 
uh, is certainly for the young young girl who would be my great granddaughter Zion. organization of African American librarians that comes together to share resources, I think helps empower our entire community. remember so well in 1956, 16 years old, with some of my brothers and sisters and cousins, going down to the Pike County Public Library in the little town of Troy, trying to get some library card, trying to check out some books. And we were told by the librarian that the library was for whites only and not for colors. I never went back to that library. 1998, July 5th, 1998, for well, book signing of my first book, Walking with the Wind. The first novelist award, the winner is Grace, a novel by Natasha Dion. By Colson White. It was Jacqueline Woodson. Clint Smith. Margot Lee Shetterly. Monique Correll. By Britt Bennett. For Hidden Figures. The Mothers. The Underground Railroad. Another Brooklyn. Atraversiamo, Counting Descent. I just feel so honored to be here. We'd like to say thank you for this award. It's such an honor for me to be here tonight. This uh, black girl from Brooklyn is deeply humbled by this honor. It is truly remarkable for me to be in this room. It was librarians that brought to many of the girls in detention and exposed them to a sphere of opportunity and promise. I just really want to say uh, thank you so much. You are so needed and I am so grateful for all that you do. BCALA in the house. And we are here, we're very excited about our luncheon with the legends. It's an exciting program. We're glad that all of you are here. You're gonna hear some interesting history stories. We'd like to again uh, thank Cersei uh, Dynex for sponsoring our luncheon. And the show will begin. Thank you so much. You've got to appreciate what you see here today. Appreciate what you see. They represent the change that brought you here. The white South, and possibly white America too, had chosen certain black folks to, to be representatives of the masses of blacks. And it, and it was that system that we had to deal with in the 1960s. We grew up in a time when segregation and discrimination was the law and was enforced by the powers of politics and police and what have you. So we were made by those times. We were uh, like the boys in the fiery furnace. You know, we were uh, hardened. So when we came out of the furnace, we were ready to uh, stand up. Uh, for our rights. I'm really happy to hear pe people recognize the fact that my father, J. Lowell Ware, actually was very instrumental in publishing the information about the student movement because but for that publication, a lot of information would not be published. This has been the work of all of us to create this change. I mean, Lonnie and, and we, you know, at the time that, that, that Lonnie and Charles started off with this and Zernona, they, we didn't know if they were gonna end up, you know, creating change or ending, or ending up in prison or killed or, or whatever. So we, we, we celebrate these people because the courage that they had took place at a time when no one knew the outcome. Today's presentation was 
as exciting as any that they've always done. They're always like that. They give us so much to take back, not just the books, but the history. And, and it's just so interesting. June 17th, 2015, the tragedy at Mother Emanuel AME Church left nine people dead. One of them was Cynthia Graham Hurd, and she was one of you. I pledge to you today, forevermore, to help with fundraisers in libraries in Cynthia Graham Hurd's name. As a writer, after this tragedy, you know, we all were looking around for something that we could do to bring the community together, help uh, heal the community, tell this story to a wider audience. When Marjorie called me with that idea, I said, wow, that would be something that we could do. Because I spent the first 14 years of my life in Emmanuel. This is a congregation. This is a group of people who are tenacious, deeply spiritual, committed to their mission of spirituality and social justice. And of course now, the summer of 2015, they meet another challenge. They meet another challenge. But we can tell already that these folk who had this horrible crime visited upon them two years ago, they're made of the same stuff that their ancestors are made of. Let us be strangers together as we gather in circles wherever we meet to stand hand in hand and pray for the fallen and speak their names. Clemente, Cynthia, Tawanza, Ethel, Sharonda, Daniel, Myra, Susie, and DePayne. They are not alone. As bells in the spires call across the wounded Charleston sky, we close our eyes and listen to the same stillness ringing in our hearts, holding on to one another like brothers, like sisters, because we know wherever there is love, there is God. Welcome to the very last Author Pavilion presentation for the day and for the conference. We must begin to rewrite our own script. Bottom line is, um, need to tell a good story and tell it well. And I would like to welcome you to our second luncheon of the conference, Lunch with Environmental Justice Advocate Matafa San Diego Ali. And this program is sponsored by the National Library of Medicine. They are a longtime sponsor of NCAL. Let's give them a great big hand, yes. How many folks in the last 24 hours have taken a drink of water? All right, I should have asked some other things y'all might have been drinking. <laughs> I heard about y'all getting turned up. <laughs> you know, that's again, in our country, in many instances, we expect to just turn that tap on and something to come out that's not gonna be devastating to our bodies. But I don't have to say anything more than Flint, Michigan, for it to become real for everybody about what's going on. And as educators, you all know 
how important it is, the power that exists in learning and being able to garner information and be able to then use that information to make real change happen in your life, inside of your community, inside of our country. But when you are exposed to lead, and primarily and predominantly, the folks who are being impacted by lead are black and brown folks. Not the only ones, but once that gets you, it don't never leave you. first conference since 1992, this conference in 2017 is a way of celebrating the legacy of the work that's been done to get us to where we are today, but also to celebrate, pause, reflect, and be willing to start the work that it's going to take to get us to another 25 years. It's been fantastic. Best week, I've been looking forward to it for the past two years, and it couldn't have been better. But I love the library. I love the library. The, and I still do. The stillness, that, that zen-like quietude of mind space, the sense of uh, escape that was there, a retreat from the world into another space of your own, the smell of books. It is my honor to present the BCLA Honorary Life Membership Award to Dr. Jesse Carney Smith. This is the award that we will send to her. On behalf of DEMCO, and BCLA, I would like to present the 2017 Award for Excellence in Librarianship. The recipient is a longtime member of BCLA, so I'd like to introduce Kelvin Watson. This year, BC, the BCALA Tyson Leadership Award is, well, is presented to Tiffany Ariel Duck. Good evening. I am both humbled and honored to receive the John Tyson Award tonight. I would like to thank the caucus, the awards committee, and the person who nominated me. I think you should give another applause to all of the winners. This brings the end to our President's Ball, and we hope you enjoyed what we planned for you tonight. And now, everybody dance now. Can you imagine an organization with their first conference in 1992? Here we are in 2017, 25 years later. That is quite an accomplishment. And we are celebrating tonight. We've been celebrating all week. Now we're having some fun. librarians will go back and we are encouraging librarians when they go back to their community to let their light shine. Libraries has been, have been here longer than most institutions. So there's a credibility that comes out of that, that community and that space. You trust it. You trust it because non-judgmental, non-biased. Truly in a library, it's, 
it's anybody, the north east meets the south and the east meets the west, everybody is somebody in the library. As a part of the library, a community, it's important space, it's an important space because it's neutral and nonpartisan. It's a space where no matter who you are, your ideas matter. It's a space where everyone has a voice and can participate. It's a space where the we can come together. All of these ladies are my mentors. Ms. Garns, who is the co-chair of this e wonderful event. Um, her, Doris Jackson, Brenda Hunter, they poured so much into me as a young librarian back 17 years ago to do the work that we do in the community. So I'm just honored to be here with them. What I um, so admire about this organization is because they are really, as the theme of this year's uh, conference is culture keepers. And so they have the opportunity to remind ourselves of where we've come from and the responsibility we have to those who paved the way for us um, is really what this conference is all about. We had such wonderful response from the authors and illustrators, winners of the Coretta Scott King Book Awards, and we were uh, just thrilled by the attendance and the uh, participation, the questions that were asked, and to have Joyce and Lev Mills there. Lev, the designer of the CSK Seal, was just an honor to have him there and to see his DVD. And then, of course, having the opportunity to attend Auburn Research Library and Atlanta U and our Congressman John Lewis in attendance and just to see the smiles, the expressions on the faces of the more than 500 attendees here in Atlanta, it was a dream come true and to culminate the event by having Dr. King's daughter, Bernie, speak, it was more than what we had expected. I am thrilled that we had so many in attendance and I do believe that with the addition of the technology we were able to communicate with our uh, BCLA uh, members and I look forward to what's going to happen in the future.